Ladies and gentlemen, Liv Cook. Can you hear me okay? You got me? Yeah, there it is. Liv Cook, everyone. Um, yes. Hello, my name's Dan, and I'm here to discuss with you today the notion, actually present you the notion, that in fact all you need is a ball. This might be handy. Um, first of all, though, I would like to take everyone on, on a bit of an imagination drive and just present some scenarios to you. So try, if you can, to imagine these. Uh, imagine sport being your world, and then one day getting an injury and being told by a doctor that you can never play competitively again. Imagine the exclusion and the feeling of not being wanted in a social group just because of the size of your body, the color of your skin, or your gender. Imagine, in an extreme case, growing up not even knowing what or if you're going to eat tomorrow. Why am I telling you all this? Well, over the past 10 years, I've had the pleasure of meeting some incredible people who have gone through these and many, many other scenarios and achieved success thanks to a ball. I want to just tell you about three of them to, uh, to put it in context. One of them is this first man up here. His name is Andrew Henderson. Andrew grew up in Cornwall. Um, was that a little cheer for Cornwall there? Was that, was that, no? um, Andrew grew up in Cornwall, uh, playing sport all his life. He represented his county in three different sports. But one day, playing rugby, was involved in a bad challenge and broke his leg in three places. He was told thereafter that the doctor said uh, there's no chance of him playing competitive sport again. He went home, and he was a very impatient person, but he had one leg fully in cast, and he picked up a ball, and he started balancing it on different parts of his body, he started juggling with it while sitting down. And three years on from that moment, Andrew became the UK and the world freestyle football champion. You might see him recently as well on, on Sky Sports, if anyone watches that, on the Shore for Men TV uh, commercials, and he's also starring in a computer game. The second person I want to tell you about is another man. It's Abbas Farid. Abbas grew up in a small southern Welsh town. All he wanted to do was play professional football. But he would never get picked. He would never seen. He would never had an opportunity. One day, after the 1998 World Cup, he saw the Brazilian team playing, all of the skills and the tricks on the field, and thought, right, that's what I want to do. I'm going to take matters into my own hand. And so he took his ball into his backyard and just had some fun, started practicing. In 2003, there was a competition in Birmingham. I don't know if his parents actually know this already, but he took a day off college <laughs> to get there. So sorry if you don't. Um, and over 100,000 people turned up to demonstrate their skills. Not just football, it was dance, acrobatics, everything. And Abbas won came first place, and as a result, he then was starring in an MTV commercial and traveled the world performing for royalty and major events. And the third person is our very own Liv Cook, who you've just seen today. Liv's always been an amazing footballer, so she's been a very sporty person all her life, but she was fantastic growing up, right the way through to the age of 15. She was, football was her life. But Liv, as I'm sure she's not alone in this, in this point, Many, maybe there's other sports people here today who have felt this, was get, constantly getting setbacks. And it was mainly due to negativity, people's perceptions of a girl playing football amongst boys. One comment she, she received at the age of 12, imagine how you deal with this at the age of 12, from a parent of the opposition team on the sideline. 
shouting something along the lines of, and I won't say, say the explicit detail, but don't you dare let that girl get past you. She was running rings around everyone. So anyway, this, this slowly built up for Liv over the years, and at the age of 15, she gave up altogether. She decided that wasn't for her, I'm not gonna put herself through it. The maturity at that age to understand that was, was for me amazing. But she didn't give up on her ball. She took that ball into her backyard, and she found YouTube and found lots of videos of people sharing tricks. And that was one year ago, almost to this day. So after one year, you've just seen what someone can achieve with just a ball. So another round of applause for Liz. Liz. <laughs> Okay, so first, we should probably start again, rewind a little bit now. Who here has heard of freestyle football before? A quick show of hands, anyone seen it? Yeah, well, that's quite good. Things are changing. Um, freestyle football has actually been around for over 2,000 years. Here we go. It can be traced back to ancient art forms in, in Asia, Eastern Asia, such as Jianzi, Jinlone, and Sepak Takraw. It is now the art and the sport of juggling with a ball using all parts of the body to entertain audiences and to outperform opponents. In the 1800s, it became popularized in Europe thanks to circus, to very famous uh, circus performers, Francis Brun from Germany and Enrico Rastelli in Italy. They, uh, they popularized the sport and, money, and a lot of the tricks that they were doing are still being used today. Then in the 1970s, 80s and 90s, uh, excuse the old school pictures, you can just about see them, um, the football world adopted some of the skills that you see. So it's very much a, an art form at this point. But some very famous footballers um, have made their name over the years, Diego Maradona and Ronaldinho in particular. They performed in their warm-up routines because they were switching on. They realized that they could turn on their brains, the whole of their body, uh, body awareness, balance, rhythm, control, technique, just by juggling the ball. And hence, they were the world's greatest players. But... So, funnily enough, no one's uh, cottoned on to that yet. Um, in the early 2000s, brands started getting into this. So major consumer brands started realizing its potential to engage with their audience. So there were a lot of campaigns, and what that did with Ronaldinho in particular spearheading this is it inspired a whole new generation of athlete to be born, just like Liv you saw today. This, this motivation to actually refine your own skills in your own environment was accelerated. And then in 2008, the first battle competition came in. So if any, there's any dancers amongst us, you might know the breakdance world where it's more of a, a showdown battle between two individuals over a set period of time, and a live judging panel will vote through who wins. This was introduced to freestyle then. I got involved in the sport in 2006. I was at that time with my first company. We just created a, a format to engage with young people at street level through sports and music to direct them into education and employment opportunities. So we met some incredible people in the, in the two years that that was, that was running. But on one day, around about seven years ago actually, again to this, this month almost, I returned from Europe on a very exciting trip to have an email from my then business partner and best friend of 20 years saying that he was off and he was taking the business with him and we didn't have contracts in place, because who does in their first business? So I understand anyone who's ever been dumped by a text, then yeah, I kind of feel I know how you feel. Um, and I was left with effectively nothing. So I was mulling over what to do next. And all I could come back to all the time was the people that I've met along this journey. The amazing young people with their stories and personalities and I was idealizing. I kept on thinking, what if? So I remember particularly one morning, I, I, I said to myself, what if there was a structure that could support these young people that wasn't commercially based, so it wasn't all about sending them out to perform and making a margin of profit, but that would engage them and inspire a whole new generation to come through? What if education could be delivered through these tricks? The attention you get from young people when you hear music and you see sports combined, and what if there was a federation, very apt for this week as well, um, what if there was a federation that wasn't underpinned by political guidance? What if it was governed by the community itself? 
So I was mulling all of this over, thinking many different ways it could go, and then I turned over to my table, and it dawned upon me that I had 35p to my name. <laughs> this moment for me is what I now call my 35p moment. <laughs> Creative, I know. Um, but for me, and I think everyone here has probably had a, a, not necessarily that moment, but a moment where you've been faced with the reality of life around you, or the pressures, or what other people are telling you to do. Certainly every freestyler that I've met has had that, Liv herself had that moment just a year ago. Do you choose to go with that? Do you accept it? Or do you follow your dream and go for it? Fast forward to now. I'm going to cut it very simple for you now. Um, and in 2011, we created the World Freestyle Football Federation, founded in the UK. We have 93 country members around the world, all promoting the fact that all you need is a ball. We have an event series, which spans six different continents. Last year, this is a picture, if you can see it, from Beijing, which reached 154 million people on TV, and no one had heard of the sport before. The potential was there just purely because it was something new and, and engaging for young people. There's an education program launching this summer, which is all about delivering nutrition, academics, and life skills through the tricks. And most humbling of all for myself was having the opportunity last November to meet the great man Ronaldinho himself, who started this movement in many ways in the early 2000s to unveil him as our global ambassador for the sport. Again, to inspire everyone who's playing the traditional game of football to say, don't rely on structure, rely on yourself, and you can progress to the next level. So I've raced through that, and I've definitely missed a few things I wanted to say to you, but what I want to leave you with is, is three key points. Identify your 35p moment. I've had many 35p moments. It's definitely not over. But everyone has a choice, and I think it's been repeated by many of the other people today, saying it in very different contexts, but go with your gut. The second one, inspiring young people are all around us. We need to listen more to them. They have fantastic ideas and creativity. Come and speak if you can later to live and actually challenge yourself to come and learn a trick from her as well. We'll see who's brave enough then. And finally, even if you don't like sport in any way at all right now. All you do need is a ball. And we'll prove that again to you later if you come over and speak to Liv. So thank you very much for your time.